as a rate of change. So slope is rate of change. They are the same thing. So what we did yesterday is going to continue on. What just happened to my Here it is. Okay. Slope is the same as rate of change. So slope measures the steepness of a line um, by comparing how much the y variable changes its rise to how much the x variable changes its run by using a ratio. That ratio we learned is, you know, m equals change in y over change in x, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So, um, rate of change is a comparison of two quantities. So, think of a rate that you guys know about. What is a rate you guys are, like, it's a constant thing you hear about all the time. Think about a rate. Can somebody give me an example a of rate. a rate? Rate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, oh, something per something. What's a rate that's something per something you hear about a lot, Justin? Miles per hour. Miles per hour. So, it's a comparison of two things. Miles over hours, right? And that gives you the speed of your car or whatever you're running or whatever. That is a typical rate you guys are used to, right? There's other things that you could talk about. There's growth rates, like how many inches you grow a year, especially when you're younger. You're going to stop growing at some point. But when you're a ch small child, kids grow a certain amount each year. So um, the, those are all rates. It's comparing two quantities. And when we're talking about rate of change, we're talking about context here. So what are the units that you're using? So when you are talking about context and units, you need to make sure that you use your units. You guys will have a quiz on Friday. Tomorrow I'll give you guys your review. And we are learning a different lesson tomorrow that isn't anything that's on the quiz. So, but you guys will have your domain and range and functions, the function notation, x and y intercepts, domain and range and context, and then the slope and rate of change lessons on. Okay? That is Friday. So we'll go over that stuff after I teach you guys some stuff tomorrow, but you need to know the difference between when you need to use units and when you are, don't. If units are given to you, should you use units? Yes. Yes. So make sure you're using your units if they're given to you. So um, you will see from the exercise is to come that any two points along a line can be used to calculate slope as rate of change. This is true for all sets of two variables that are linearly related. So remember, y is the dependent and x is the independent. Just another name there. Just another really quick note here. Okay, when you're doing slope without context, so without any like word problem or anything, always leave it as an improper fraction. Never leave, write a mix, never, never a decimal, okay? So if it has to be improper, that is okay. You do not have to change it to a mixed number, and you shouldn't change it to a mixed number. When we're talking about slope with context, meaning with units, how often do you hear somebody say that you're driving, like if you hear somebody talking, you wouldn't, somebody wouldn't say, I'm driving 72 over 5 miles per hour. You don't hear that, do you? No, they would divide it and get a decimal, right? You hear decimals in context. So the only time, listen to me, the only time slope should be a decimal is if it is in context, okay? So it is a decimal if in context. Because think about it. When you say things, you don't, you don't say things as fractions. You say, I'm going 5.2 miles. You don't, you know, say that as whatever it would be as a fraction. So these are really important pieces of information to know. Almost all of the time it will be a fraction, because most of the time we won't be doing it in context. But if it is in context, you would write it as a decimal. Does everybody understand that? You understand what I mean by in context? It has units. All right. So go ahead and write that down, and then you guys can flip to the next page. Oh, sorry, Brian. I'll go back.
Yeah. Guys, don't forget that you have another clever assignment due next week. If you haven't done the other one, get it done. I still haven't put it in. Probably Wait, won't put it in until that later. One yesterday? Huh? The one just due this week yesterday? Did you upload it? I have not put that one in the grade book yet. So no, like on clever, has it been like? Added? It should be on there. Already. Okay, because I did three of them last night, and I wanted to know if that's the one that. You should have. You probably did one of them. That, the one that was due then, because that has been up. I uploaded it last week to be open for Monday. All right. Okay, calculate the slope for each of the following segments. So let's start from B, A to B. So from A to B, what is my slope? Jordan, what is my slope from A to B? If you do the rise over run on that, what is it? Yeah, you go up three, right two. So your rise over your run equals three over two. Emma, what is my slope from B to C? Um, what does it start as? Um, 6 over 4. Right, you go up 6 over 4, and that does simplify to 3 over 2. Because 2 goes into both of those, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Right? Grace. So let's look at that. So did you do A to C? Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, no. So, um, Count again real quick. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then what is it over? Uh, Try to count again. There you go. And what goes into both 9 and 6, guys? Three. So that's 9 divided by 3 is 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So if you place D at any point along AC without any calculation, what would the slope of AD be? So, Josh, tell me what order pair you want to place D at. It has to be along that line. Okay, uh, so where do you want that point along the line? Uh, 2, 4. 2, 4 is in the point on this line. This is like the origin right here, if you wanted to know. So if this is 0, 0. 2, 2 is right here. This is 0, 0. One, three. 1, 3 is up here. 1, comma, 2. There you go. So if D is placed at 1, 2, what would our slope be without any calculation? Riley, what would our slope be without any cal calculation? Um, for what again? AD, our new segment there. What would our slope be? Without any calculations. Don't even look at it. Just look at what we've done. What should our slope be? Three over two. Why, Justin? Because the slope of the line is the same. It's a line, right? And slopes of lines are constant. It's the same no matter where you are finding the points at. So this is because linear slopes are constant. So you should always have the same slope no matter where you're at along the line. All right, questions so far before we do the next example. So notice, did this one have any context to it? No, so we don't have to write, we need to keep it as a fraction, right? So let's think about the next one here. So it says that the following graph shows Raquel's distance from home as she drives to college. Um, so we know y over x is our slope, just so we know this, before we even get started on this. What does it say y is according to the axis here? What does the y-axis mean? Riley? The distance 
So distance in miles. And what does the X mean, Connor? Um, um, the distance, turn over time. Time in hours. So we already know our unit. So in this case, if we have a fraction, should we write it as a decimal? Yes, because it has context. Okay, so determine the slope of this linear relationship using the slope formula and the two points that are shown on the graph. So we have two points on the graph. We have 6, 348, and 2, 116. So if you guys want to use that stacking method like this, that's fine. But if you weren't, you would do 116 minus 348 over 2 minus 6. So that's negative 232 over negative 4. Can somebody please do that in their calculator? So what is it when you do negative 232 over negative 4? Come on, guys. You're in a math class. Your calculator should be on your desk. It's not in here anymore. Oh, God. Okay, it's not last year anymore. You're now a freshman in high school. You're not even in middle school anymore. What is it? Did Can somebody confirm Justin's 58? You got it? Okay, good. So what are the units of the slope? What did we just say the units of our slope are? Jordan, what are the units of our slope? Units for our slope. It's somewhere on there. We already talked about this. Yeah, it's change in y over change in x, and we said that's miles per hour. Okay, then. So what does this slope represent? So what is the meaning of our slope then, RC? What does it mean? What does that 58 mean? Yeah, Raquel is driving 58 miles per hour. So since there are units, we need to use units. Since it is a context problem, we need to, sim well, you need to simplify either way, but you need to actually divide. In this case, it came out to be a whole number, right? I mean, if it hadn't, it would be fine if you had gotten a decimal, but you need to make sure you're using units when there's context. Okay, questions on that first example? Go ahead and get that written down. When you're ready, flip. If you have questions, please let me know. All right. Hachi was driving a car at a constant speed on the New York State Thruway. He noticed that after driving for one hour, he had 12 gallons of gas left. Then, after driving for a total of three hours, he had eight gallons of gas left. Assuming the problem that there is a linear relationship between the amount of gallons left and the time Hachi has been driving. So express the information given in this problem as two ordered pairs, where the independent variable is the time and the dependent variable is the gasoline, gallons of gasoline. So independent, is that X or Y? Uh, X. And what is the dependent? Yeah. Okay. Independent variables cannot change. Can you change time? No. No. At this moment in life, there is no way to change time. And maybe someday, but at this point, you cannot change time. So time will almost always be your X. Do you understand that? Unless there's other, two other units. But if you're ever given time, time will be your X because you can't change time. So we do our x comma y, and in this case, that is time comma number of gallons, and we create two ordered pairs with time comma number of gallons. Colin, what is one of my ordered pairs then? Let's see. 112. So at one hour, Hachi had 12 gallons of gas, right? Mike, what's another one? Uh, three hours, 
So that would be 3 comma 8, right? 3 hours, he had 8 gallons left. So first we're expressing them as ordered pairs. If you're given points, you should never put two of the same variable in there. So it should never be time comma time or number of gallons comma number of gallons. It should be comparing two different things because x and y are two different things, right? So this is going to be important as we get to writing equations later on in the next month here, okay? Sometimes you're not just directly given the points and you guys have to write them yourselves. So it says calculate the slope of the line connecting these two points. So we're then going to calculate the slope. So what would that look like for us? Connor, what would that look like for us? What would we subtract on the top? Over. One minus two, or three. There you go. So it's four over negative two, which is just Can negative two. Okay, do it real quick and try it that way and see what happens. Yeah. Does it matter? No, it does not. So matter. what matters is that you, if you start with the first one, yes. you have to subtract to the second one, and then on the bottom you have to go back and start with the first one and subtract to the second one. But if you start with the second one, you have to subtract the first one, and then you have to go back to the second one. You can't, like, switch the order you're subtracting in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it does not matter as long as you, you start, you, wherever you start it, you go back and do that with the X's as well. Okay? Um, so we need to include units here. What is our Y unit? What is our Y unit, Brian? What, do, what does Y stand for? What does Y stand for? So, this is gallons. Jana, what does X stand for? So, he's losing two gallons per hour. Does it make sense that he's losing gas if you're driving? So, it does make sense that it's negative. Okay. So he loses two gallons per hour. So are there questions on how we found the units on that or the answer for that before we move on to C? Okay, then. So it says, how long after you started driving will Hachi run out of gas, assuming the rate you calculated in Part B does not change and is constant? So if we're making a table, we can make a table, an XY table. So he starts, we know that he has... After three hours, he has eight gallons of gas left, right? So after four hours, how many gallons of gas would he have left? Six. Justin, how did you get that? You subtracted two. Okay, Jordan Coward, how many would you have after five hours then? He's losing two gallons of gas every hour. Loses two gallons of gas. So if he's at six gallons and he's losing two, what would he be at at five? There you go. Lamar, how many gallons of gas would he have after six hours then if he's losing two gallons every hour and we're at four? Two. Miguel, how about at seven hours? Zero. So how many hours can he drive for then? So... He will run out of gas after seven hours. All right, questions on that example before we continue to the next one. So it says, at three weeks old, a corn plant is four inches tall. And at 15 weeks, it is 46 inches tall. Find the rate of change. So first, you have to determine what your independent variable is and your dependent variable is. So remember, independent is not changeable. So which one can you not change? So what are our two units we're choosing from first? So Colin, what are our two units we're choosing from first? The two units are inches and weeks. 
And which one of those is the independent? Which one cannot be changed? Um, the inches. Weeks. Inches? So you can't change, the plant can't grow and change sizes? Oh, I thought I meant, okay. Uh, yeah, it's the weeks. Can you change the time? Yeah. No. 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 I thought you meant like you let it. I mean, time is going to happen no matter what, right? You can't t change there being 24 hours in a day. Is there still going to be 24 hours in a day? No. Yeah. You can make it have 25 hours in a day? Oh, wait, no, no, no. Okay, so can you change, like, how many weeks something is happening then? No. No, your birthday is X amount of weeks away no matter what, right? Sure. But can the height of the plant grow over time? Yes. It's dependent on, the, the height of the plant is dependent on the number of weeks it's growing for, right? That's why it's the dependent variables, because the height is dependent on the weeks it is growing. The weeks aren't dependent on its height, is it? Does the weeks change because the height's changing? No. The weeks are going to change no matter what, right? So weeks are your independent, and dependent is inches. So that means our ordered pairs are going to be weeks, comma, inches. So, R.C., what is one of our ordered pairs, then? Um, so, at three weeks, it is four inches. Josh, what is another one? So, then we do the change in Y over the change in X. Which for us, the Y is the inches, and the X is the week, so we're doing inches per week, right? So we do 46 minus 4 over 15 minus 3, which is 42 over 12. What is 42 divided by 12? So notice, can Kaylee write this as a decimal? Can Kaylee write this slope as a decimal? Yes. Why? Because there's context. context. Okay, if there had not been context, you better not write it as a decimal. You would just have to divide each thing by two or whatever number is the biggest number that goes into it. But in this case, you can. And did you say 3.5? Mm -hmm. And what are the units on this for us, guys? What are the units on this one? Inches per week. It's a rate, so it needs to have that per in there. So it's 3.5 inches per week. Okay, it says, after driving for four hours, Tom is 82 miles from home. After driving for seven hours, Tom is 244 miles from home. Find the rate of change. So, Emma, what is my independent variable here? Huh? Hours. hours. Time is always your independent. You can't change time. So, what is our dependent variable then, Jayla? Miles. Distance. Yep, miles is good. So we're going to do hours, comma, miles. So, Riley, what is one of my ordered pairs? Uh, one of your ordered pairs is 4, comma, 82. Jana, what's the other one? Okay, so we do a change in Y over a change in X. And if you just want to do it the stacking way, I'm completely fine with that. I'm just doing the subtraction so you guys see it. So that's miles per hour. So that's 244 minus 82 over 7 minus 4. Or 7 minus 4, not 7 minus 3.
So you divide 162 divided by 3. And you get 54. But what are the units? So this is 54 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. Even if it's like meters per second, if you guys did M slash S, that's completely fine. As long as you're using the right abbreviation. All right, one more example, then I'll get you guys your homework to work on. So it says, what is the rate of change over the interval negative 1, comma 1? So when it gives you the interval negative 1, comma 1, is that an ordered pair? No. No. No, that's telling you to make two ordered pairs, isn't it? Like on your homework you did. So your order pairs are going to start with 1 and negative 1 here. Mike, what is the order pair with negative 1? 7, And how about with 1? 9. 9, and then I'll just do it your guys' way real quick here. So four to, or 5 to 9 is? 4 plus 2. Negative 1 to 1 is? Plus 2. So it's a y over an x. So that's 4 over 2, which is just? And notice, do we have any units for this one? No. Nope. So we stay here. All right.